I'm sure he'll be here any minute. <laughs> When you absolutely, positively have to be there on time, call 1-900-USA-WAKE and record your own message to be delivered anytime to any telephone in the USA. Call today so you won't be late tomorrow. And for the correct time, call 1-900-USA-TIME. Hello, I'm Wally Kennedy. Should the city of Philadelphia actively recruit gay men and women for the Philadelphia Police Department? Next time, both sides of the debate over actively recruiting gays for the police. Join us at 10. And I'm Elizabeth Starr. Teen pop idol Debbie Gibson brings our high-energy show to the Delaware Valley twice in the next week. We'll bring you that story along with all the other entertainment events coming up on the next AM Philadelphia at 10 in the morning. So join us. WPBI-TV Philadelphia. As a public service to our late night viewers, Channel 6 now presents a rebroadcast of tonight's 11 o'clock news. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Don Tollefson, Dave Roberts, and Jim Gardner. Wednesday night, a woman is dead after a casino bus accident on the Garden State Parkway. And there is trouble for another plane in Sioux City just one week to the day after the crash of Flight 232. But the big story in Action News tonight is an effort at crisis control in Philadelphia's Hispanic community. Action News reporter Dwayne Jackson has that story tonight. Fifth Street near Lehigh in North Philadelphia is known as the Golden Block, a blend of Hispanic businesses and homes patrolled by the 25th Police District. But lately, people here have been at odds with the 25th District, just as Hispanics across the city have been at odds with police. They've been critical of police handling of the July 4th murder of 15-year-old Stephen Crespo and have cried brutality in the July 15th police shooting of 27-year-old Eddie Cruz. Considering what has been going on, you know, between cops and Puerto Ricans, my idea is that, you know, there's still going to be anger and hatred. In an effort to ease tensions between police and the community, 16 officers from the 25th and 26th districts met privately with community leaders tonight. The officers make up a special patrol unit developed to improve relations between police and residents through hands-on interaction. We're just trying to let these officers see how they're viewed by the community. And at the same time, uh, get the community, get the the community to see what the police officer's point of view is. They'll be able to begin establishing a new relationship, uh, a much more positive uh, relationship along lines of, of friendship and, and camaraderie rather than uh, opposition. The new patrols will operate in the 25th and 26th districts only. The officers will work from 6 p.m. until 2 in the morning, five days a week, starting tonight. Officers Pedro Vargas and Rosemary King volunteered for the special unit. I grew up in the 25th district, and I uh, have a special interest in the, seeing this, you know, basically go through. This is uh, proof that we are uh, interested and we do care. This is the right thing um, they should be doing now, as far as coming out and reaching us you know, making us understand where they're coming from. Police officials admit the officer community outreach program was born as a reaction to conflict in the community, but say if it works, the program might continue as a way of preventing future conflicts. Dwayne Jackson, Channel 6 Action News, North Philadelphia. Funeral services were held tonight for the family killed in Saturday's pileup on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. There were so many mourners this evening that some were set up outside the Faith Church of Worcester. They came to pay their final respects to the family, the Johnson family of Phoenixville. Charles and Cheryl Johnson and their two sons, five-year-old Matthew and three-year-old Timothy. It was last Saturday when a truck slammed into a line of stopped cars two miles south of the Lansdale Interchange on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The truck driver from Gloucester City has not been charged. Federal agents are investigating the mishap, including the condition of the truck's brakes. Today's bus crash on the Garden State Parkway has now claimed the life of a 76-year-old woman. The bus turned over on the parkway on its way to the casinos in Atlantic City. Tonight, Blanche Biamonte of Newark, New Jersey, died from her injuries. 37 other people required hospital treatment, and 11 of them have since been released. Still no word tonight on what caused the crash. A Northwest Airlines commuter plane had to make an emergency landing today, and guess where it happened? Sioux City, Iowa. The twin-engine plane lost oil pressure and power in its left engine on its way from Minneapolis to Sioux City. 31 passengers remain calm. 
but they were all thinking of the crash landing at the same airport, which happened one week ago this evening. Fortunately, nobody was injured today. Meanwhile, federal investigators were in Cincinnati today as part of their probe into the crash of Flight 232. They were at the GE plant that made the engines on the DC-10. An inspector will spend the next couple of days looking at the manufacturing records of those engines. The big question, why did the fan section of the number two engine disintegrate about 45 minutes into the flight? For the time being, at least, the thrill is gone. The thrill show has been postponed from this coming September to at least next spring because of the shutdown of JFK Stadium. It is sad news to many people, especially the people who benefit from the event. It's a big help. My go, my mother goes, and my sister all go. Without the money the annual thrill show raises for families of slain police officers and firefighters, neither Anne Marie Trench nor her sister or mother would have been able to go to college. Today, they all attend classes at Holy Family College in Frankfurt. Anne Marie's father was killed in the line of duty four years ago. Thomas Trench was sitting in his patrol car at 17th and Spring Garden when a gunman approached the vehicle and fired several shots into it. Since the tragedy, Anne Marie says the family has struggled to go on with their lives. It's more of adjustment to go on with your life. I mean, your life is really put on display because of what happened. And, um, you know, of course you have to go on without Daddy. And that's why the Thrill Show is so important. It's raised millions of dollars for the Herald Scholarship Fund to help family members like the trenches, but scholarship board members have put off this year's event due to structural problems that forced the shutdown of JFK Stadium. Tonight, families and those who work closely with them, like Debbie Gold, are outraged by the decision. It's a feeling of insult. It's another slap in the face. Um, it's just this sense of why did, why did my husband or wife or my son-in-law or my daughter-in-law or my daughter or my son die? FOP leader Rich Costello says the board's decision confirms suspicions that the scholarship money isn't being used properly and he's calling for an audit to find out just what's going on. We think it's being mismanaged and this is just one more example of what amounts to indictable incompetence in the city of Philadelphia. Tonight, scholarship board members say it's been hard finding a suitable place for the thrill show, and they hope to find a new location by next spring so the show can go on. Costello says the board has ignored an offer by New Jersey Speedway to hold the event there for free. It has ignited a controversy tonight, and all of a sudden the family members of slain police officers and firefighters find themselves caught in the middle. Rick Williams, Channel 6, Action News. From Yosemite National Park tonight, an inspiring success story about a man by the name of Mark Wellman. Wellman is 29 years old. He became the first paraplegic today to ever scale the El Capitan Cliff at Yosemite National Park in California. Wellman made the climb with a friend, Mike Corbett. They have been climbing for a week, and today they scale the final 300 feet with Wellman on Corbett's back. And when they got to the top, it was quite a celebration. Wellman lost the use of his legs in 1982 when he plunged 50 feet from another peak at Yosemite. And today he had some advice for other physically handicapped people. In his words, go out and do it. If you feel you can do it, just go out and do it. And he did. Still to come on Action News tonight, some wicked summertime weather makes its way through the Delaware Valley tonight. Dave Roberts has all those details. And from Don Pollock's world, the latest way to plug in for a good time in your car. Those stories, plus Don Tollison, the latest from the Eagles training camp and Phillies highlights that you will enjoy when Action News continues tonight. Okay, Schmidt, this is where your lucky streak ends. Mike Schmidt drank his milk, and he still does. All low-fat or skim, milk is fitness you can drink. Cash or charge? We interrupt this purchase for a reminder. I've got to have it. There's still one more place to comparison shop. I don't know where to start. Here by choosing the card that actually pays you cash. Cash back for every charge. The Discover card. That's the one. It's perfect. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. Afraid you can't afford the sleek styling and high performance of a Honda Accord? Don't be such a chicken. 
with just one trip to your local Honda dealer and less than $12,000, you can afford to fly the coupe. The Honda Accord Coupe. Right now, you can buy one from your local Honda dealer for under $12,000. And that's not a lot of scratch. I'm Mark Howard. The program is called Inside Story, and every Sunday morning we take a look at a lot of controversial topics. For example... No guy who runs a dumb ball up a field deserves a million dollars. Are these people nuts? I mean, what's going on? Why do people in Philadelphia... Why are they have the water? What's the situation? Yeah. They're adult yeah. women, yeah. and they have the right to do with their bodies as they <laughs> see fit. There's a whole group of insiders ready to share their opinions on just about everything every Sunday morning at 9.30 here on Channel 6. At this hour, firefighters were on the scene of a fire at an oil tank farm in West Deptford Township, New Jersey. Officials believe the tank at the coastal refinery at Route 130 and 295 was struck by lightning. It is now completely engulfed by flames. Fortunately, no evacuation so far and no injuries. The oil tank fire just a few miles away from today's chemical fire in West Deptford. That forced an evacuation, but everybody is back home tonight. It happened at a platinum refining unit at the Johnson Matthey plant near Interstate 295. The toxic fumes from the fire were kept inside the plant, but authorities evacuated about 150 people in a three square mile area just to be safe. Five firefighters suffered minor injuries. We still have no word on a cause there. First, it was the pump project. Bucks County now faces another emotional environmental issue. County commissioners will soon decide whether to build a 500-foot wide flood control dam on the Neshaminy Creek in central Bucks County. The proposed dark hollow dam is the last of eight flood control dams for the creek. At a public hearing tonight, supporters said the dam is needed to protect downstream communities. Opponents say it will do environmental harm. The way to address flooding problems in the Neshaminy is through stormwater management at the municipal level rather than through the ossified dam building mentality of the 1950s and 1960s. To approve this dam and complete a project which started as nine parts and to leave uh, the last one undone where it provides the majority of the benefits is really foolhardy and provides a lot of additional damage to the people downstream. County commissioners are expected to make a final decision within a month's time. President Bush's bid for a constitutional amendment to outlaw flag burning has suffered a major blow in Congress. Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee today blocked the proposed constitutional amendment. Instead, they pursued passage of a statute that they say can accomplish the same thing without altering the Constitution. The proposed bill could make it to the House floor by next week. Today, the House threw at a future of the stealth bomber into doubt. It voted to sharply limit production money for the expensive warplane designed to elude Soviet radar. The action sets up a confrontation with the Senate now, which just yesterday voted to back the bomber if it passes flight and radar tests. Conferees will now work out a compromise, and it may not be until next year before the final fate of the stealth is decided. But the real talk of Washington tonight is not flag burning or the stealth, but the great prostitute march. This picture was taken by an intern for the Washington Post the other night. It shows two dozen ladies of the night, many in spiked heels and miniskirts, in a forced march to Virginia. They were rounded up by police and marched from Washington's red light district, past the Great Mall, and onto the bridge to Virginia. And Virginia is not amused. And I hope Mayor Barry steps up, faces this one squarely, and acts promptly and decisively, and that an incident of this type, which is really an indignity to the Commonwealth of Virginia, will never reoccur. The prostitutes eventually hopped into cabs and went right back to work in Washington, D.C. Tonight, city officials are still investigating the incident. This videotape is the work of a frustrated store owner in Houston, Texas. His electronic store had been burglarized three times, and so he left a video camera and recorder running all night. And sure enough, thieves came calling. They simply drove their car through the front windows and began grabbing everything in sight, even the camera. But they missed the recorder. Police in Houston looking for the suspected burglar tonight. You get off my back. He needs some help. No, we all need help. If your child's mental health is affected by drugs or alcohol, we can help. We're Mount Sinai Hospital. Treating a problem like this involves everyone in your family. So our specialists will help you work together successfully. Call us at Mount Sinai Hospital at 1-800-654-GRAD.
Of course you're expecting someone else. Here's news you weren't expecting. Remarkable sterling savings. Like low 4.9% financing on every 1989 sterling 827. Having the affair with the boss certainly came with perks that I took advantage of. On the next Sally Jesse Raphael, should you sleep with the boss? My brain screamed, no, 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 and I opened my mouth and I came, sure, if you're going to have an affair with the boss, be are discreet. The men ran an equal risk of being accused of sleeping their way to the top. Don't do it. You'll be sorry. Playing around at the office on the next Sally. Watch Sally Jesse Raphael, 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. This rebroadcast of tonight's 11 o'clock news is presented by Channel 6 as a public service to our late night viewers. For the Phils, tonight's game had another one run loss written all over it until the ninth inning. They are one out away from losing their seventh in a row and then Randy Reddy is rough and ready, Jim. Phils would have lost seven in a row, but thanks to Randy Reddy, they have broken the losing streak at six. Phils took a lead in this game tonight in Montreal. Terry Mulholland helped his own cause with an RBI double in the fourth. That scored Darren Dalton. But the one nothing lead did not last long. Bottom of the fourth and Tim Wallach hits a two run homer. The Red Hot Expos are ahead at two to one. Now in the fifth inning, they would get another run. This on the RBI double by Andres Galarraga. So the lead goes to 3-1. It did not look good for the Phillies. Still down 3-2 in the ninth. And that usually dependable Tim Wallach commits a very costly error. Von Hayes off Zane Smith then will rip one to right. And watch this. Hubie Brooks cannot find the baseball. It's not a home run, though. Instead, it is stuck in the fence. They pad those fences to protect the outfielders. Von Hayes would have to go back to second, a ground rule double, second and third. And then with two outs, second and third, Randy Reddy with the two run single from down 3-2 when Hayes scores. The Phillies go up 4-3. Randy Reddy does the job. So does Roger McDowell. He's been so impressive since the trade from the Mets and the Phillies salvage one to end the road trip. On the scoreboard in the National League, the Mets have lost. The Cincinnati Reds have lost 10 in a row, their biggest losing streak in 23 years. Atlanta over San Francisco tonight. Afternoon action today in Oakland, California. American League West action. The California Angels are trying to sweep their big three-game series with the Oakland A's. But Oakland will come from behind. Ricky Henderson, he's done so much since coming over from the Yankees. A's rally to win the game and salvage one out of three. Angels, though, still lead the AL West by a game over those Oakland A's. How about tonight in the American League? Cleveland is one. Kansas City is one. Baltimore and Minnesota tied in the ninth inning. Well, the Eagles got another rookie in camp today as running back Robert Drummond of Syracuse came to terms. Two rookie linebackers, though, Jesse Small and Britt Hager, are still unsigned. But as Scott Palmer reports, there are plenty of battles at linebacker, even without him. Byron Evans has all the tools to one day be a Pro Bowl linebacker. No one has ever questioned his talent. Now, with Mike Reichenbach still holding out, Evans knows what he has to do here in training camp. Just going out there and just uh, getting, getting the calls down and uh, concentrating on what I have to do. Not so much as Mike not being here or no one else not being here. Just as far as me getting a, grab, getting a grasp on what I have to know and uh, just contribute to the team. The only question anyone has about Byron is his ability to run Buddy Ryan's complex 46 defense. I just have to be able to read, get my reads down a lot more than, a lot better than what I've been and, uh, and therefore take care of yourself. Are you optimistic about this being your year? Oh yeah, I, you know, I have to be optimistic about things, you know. Last year, you know, it was kind of a setback, but I, I felt I contributed to the team quite a bit and uh, this year I'm just going to go out and persevere and just overcome all the obstacles. 
we eased into the voluntary camp with formations and adjustments and things, and now we're into the sophisticated things and the, the tough formations and the recognition areas and things like that. Now he's now he's got to work, and if he can pull through the heat and the and the tiredness and the soreness, then and keep his mental frame of mind in place, he'll be in good shape. So far, Buddy likes the way Evans is running the show. He's really into it as a pro. It's a lot of responsibility, and he's come on. He's uh. He's a pro football player, and he's changing the defenses and doing a good job. I'm Scott Palmer, Channel 6 Action News with the Eagles at Westchester. And no doubt about one thing, Byron Evans can put a hit on you. That's quite apparent. Oh, yes. All right, coming up on Action News, Dave Roberts and Don Pollock, when we continue in just a moment. Steve McQueen is a man with a mission. Mr. Thorson is a bounty hunter. If there's a price on your head, he's going to cash you in. Come a long ways. I'm going to take him back with me. But now he's playing a dangerous game as revenge turns the hunter into the hunted. I've been watching you, Thorson. I'm going to kill you. Steve McQueen in his final motion picture performance as the hunter. Don't miss Steve McQueen in the hunter Friday after Nightline. Fighting weapon. Step one, reconstruct unsolved crimes at the scene. Two, help identify suspects by broadcasting their pictures. Three, involve the public through rewards, a tip line. And four, call it Crime Fighters with Rob Jennings. Exactly. What? Excellent, Watson. But Action News did it first. Oh, Crime Fighters with Rob Jennings. Tonight, it works. Only on Action News. Amazing. Who? Action News, my dear Watson. Tough thunderstorms tonight. Here's Dave Roberts on the AccuWeather forecast. Lots of instability in the air with all of this heat and humidity. Tonight was no exception. This was the scene on City Avenue, looking from City Avenue. You watch closely, you can see the sky with those thunder flashes, flashes of lightning. There they are, and that was just part of it. About 5% of the area got, got hit with some real hitters and shakers. For example, at the Spectrum tonight, uh, they had a real downpour, about six inches of rain. They got hit hard in that storm uh, just the other day. So as I said, about 5% of the area picking up some real heavy stuff. Down in Newark, Delaware, they picked up an inch and a half of rain a little over an hour earlier this evening. 95% uh, of the folks saw absolutely nothing, maybe a little lightning flash similar to what we had here on City Avenue. High pressure system remains in that fashion, hot and humid. We have still another day of it, probably followed by another day of it. Thunderstorm activity all around it, not only in our area, but also all the way down to Florida. A little movement of that system. When we look to the central plains, we see a little bit of clearing, and then to the north, and we see a frontal system coming in our direction. Pocket of cooler, drier air. As that frontal system runs into some of this heat and humidity, it's touching off a severe line of showers and thunderstorms. We possibly will pick up some of that come tomorrow night, come Friday, as we try to come out of this system. But that is the system there that's going to bring us a little relief. The rest of the country, a low pressure disturbance, more of that precipitation staying to our south. 35 degrees, the cool spot in the country in Leadville, Colorado, 118 in Death Valley. Out in the northwest, they've got a little more precip. So we'll watch that frontal system slowly move in our direction with somewhat cooler, drier air. But for the next couple of days, we're going to have to stay with that pocket of hot, humid stuff. So more. We're going to have more of the three H's. Heat, haze, and humidity at this hour. It's 72 up in the Pocono, 79 in Allentown. 73 was our low at 315 this afternoon. We hit 94 degrees in that 90-degree range for the fourth day in a row. These are the 11 o'clock numbers. Present temperature reading is 75. Humidity, 92%. The barometer is steady, 30.09. Southwesterly winds, 10 miles per hour. Water temperature is slipped to 78. In the northeast, 74, 75 outside the station, 76 for uh, Center City, and 75 at the airport.